This week I built my kids a mud kitchen and they have been playing with it constantly. It costs about $30 in lumber to build plus some odds and ends scraps to make the working sink and the rest of the parts and it took me about three hours to make it in total. In this video I'm going to show you how. So for the main frame, I'm going to use two by boards because they're stronger and they're going to hold up and be a little bit more weather resistant. This is very similar to how you would build a picnic table or an Adirondack chair. And two by twos and two by fours are also very inexpensive, which cuts down on the cost of the project quite a bit. I'm using a compound miter saw to do all my cutting, but you can also use a circular saw or even a jigsaw. Don't overthink this project, it's going to get dirty eventually. Okay, so that's the back leg and what I'm going to do here is mark the height of the back leg on with the front leg there. And then once I have my back leg marked, I'm going to mark where the shelf goes. And I just use a speed square to draw a level line across. And then I'm going to take my other three back legs and transfer the marks all the way across. So in a lot of my plans you'll see like repeatable steps where you you know do the same thing three times in a row or something like that because it makes it easy for the project to be customizable and um, it makes building that much easier and less errors. So for screws I'm using these two and a half inch self tapping trim screws. What's really nice about them is they're not going to split your wood when you put the screw in but because it doesn't have a big head there was a couple of times when it didn't want to pull the boards together if that makes sense so simply just back the screw out and then try again and usually that fixes the problem pretty quickly if you do have problems with your wood splitting go ahead and pre-drill and then use your screws So I did two screws where I connected to the 2x4 part at the top and then just one screw at the bottom. I definitely recommend using wood glue. Um, a lot of times you will see me not using wood glue and that's because I'm you know, making a prototype a lot of times and I may have to undo something or redo something so um, I will hold off on the glue but I definitely recommend it. Okay, so once I got the three leg sets done I'm going to start tying them together with 2x4s. So there'll be a 2x4 backsplash and then a 2x4 front apron. So same thing, just throwing those screws in. This is really easy. You don't have to be strong or super talented to do any of this. Seriously, it's easy. Um, having a clamp in a table like I've got really helps. Okay, and now I'm going to add that third leg set. So the reason you need that middle leg is the decking that goes on top is not strong enough to span this big of a distance, so I put it in there and I think it looks cute too. Alright, so how to attach when you've got boards kind of joining in a T. What you can do is use a pocket hole jig or you can just throw your screws in an angle like I'm doing. I won't say that um, that is necessarily easy to do, but it's certainly something that can be tackled and um, is just fine structurally because later on we're going to add a bunch of decking that'll tie everything in. So my kids at this point thought I was building a bench, <laughs> and I guess you could make this into a bench too. So no need to write all the anything down here. I've got everything detailed in a plan all the way down to the number of screws that you're going to use and it's all free to download at your convenience and build and modify to suit your needs. What I actually found worked really good was to start on the outside board and screw into the end of the other board. Super cute. 
Okay, so that's all the two by structure. Now I'm gonna put the decking on. So I'm using one by six pine boards, but I'd rather have cedar fence pickets just because the cedar will hold up better outside and it's cheaper, but I live 100 miles from the nearest Home Depot, so couldn't get any and then just use what I had on hand. Um, so you'll just need two screws to attach each board on each overlap. And I switched out to an inch and a half long screw, the same type of screw. So I'm leaving a small gap between all the decking boards just to allow for water drainage. That really helps stiffen things up. The front board of the bottom shelf needs to be notched around the two by twos. Now this is not hard to do. All you do is set the board in place and I used a speed square to mark where the legs are and I marked it an inch and a half back which is the width of your two by two leg. And then I just finished making the marks on the back of the board and I'm going to go ahead and clamp it to my workbench and cut it out with a jigsaw. I cut a little generous so that it's easy to put the shelf board in. and then just go ahead and finish screwing down the front shelf board. I thought it would be really cute to make this project have like a hutch shelf on the top. So um, I attached a one by six at the top and this also helps strengthen up the top. And then just the shelf board, I attach that to the top board. Don't worry, we're gonna reinforce all this in a second. Isn't this turning out cute? So I had some leftover two by twos and I just decided to 45 them and make little support brackets. So one thing I'm gonna caution you is avoid cutting 45 degree angles out of really tiny pieces of wood is just a recipe for disaster. And make sure you clamp your um, board before you cut it when you're cutting small pieces like this. The best thing is just to cut it out of a much longer board that you know you can secure a lot easier. All right, this was such a quick and easy project. Uh, literally, it was just like an hour to get it to this point. And I love projects like this because, um, you know, it's a toy. So eventually your kids are going to outgrow it. And if you just went to the store and bought a plastic version, it's going to live forever in a landfill. This is biodegradable. This is repurposable. This is reusable. This is refinishable, you know, so you could modify what you do with it. For the sink, I didn't want to go out and just buy anything. Of course you could. Um, so I just found a Tupperware that, you know, I'd lost the lid for and um, traced it out. And I'm going to use that for the sink. But in hindsight, the kids have been using this project so much. It may have been nice to have like a real sink with a real drain. I just had no idea at this point that they were going to use it all day. After I sanded it, I gave it a coat of stain and then a couple coats of exterior polyurethane. I know it's going to take a lot of water, so just went ahead and threw that third coat on. 
For the faucet, I had a leftover sink sprayer. So I'm just gonna use that for a faucet. I like the idea of a sink sprayer because they can't just leave it on. They have to depress the trigger in order to get it to spray. So it was a little bit tricky getting the faucet hose to connect to the garden hose. What I ended up doing is taking it to the hardware store and trying on all the fittings until I got it to work. For the drain, I just used a standard plug in a hole. So I wanted to create the look of a stove, but I didn't want to consume all the counter space with a stove top. So what I'm going to do is make these removable little blocks of wood, if you will, that um, you can set on top and they'll look like a stove top, but when you want to turn your mud kitchen into a rock painting station or a fish cleaning station or a potting bench, you can just remove the blocks of wood. So it was easy just to cut everything out first while I could clamp a longer board and then chop it into the smaller pieces. All right, I'm gonna brave the bugs and hook it all up to the garden hose and um, after some spray paint on those stove blocks, which turned out really cute, and some hooks, we're ready to see what the kids think of this project. So of course the sprayer was the big hit. So there's a lot of little details in this project that um, if you want, I'm gonna put those in my blog post. You can head on over there and check it out, link to the supplies that I used, and of course, download the free plans. Thanks so much for watching this week. We'll see you next week.